Dear students, under the topic fuzzy union, here we have the theorem 2.6, which says that limit W tending to infinity, minimum of 1 comma a power W plus b power W, the whole raise to the power 1 by W is equal to maximum of a comma b. Now we have to prove this theorem, where the function minimum of this is the Jager class for the fuzzy union, which we have already seen in our class lecture. Now, we shall prove that limit W tending to infinity of this Jager class is equal to maximum of A, B. The proof will be done in three cases. They are... So, we will be proving the theorem in these three cases. That is, in case 1, we will consider a to be equal to 0 and we will check out whether it satisfies the theorem and also we will consider b as 0 and then we will check out whether it satisfies the theorem. In case 2, we will consider a to be equal to b and we will be proving the theorem and in case 3, a will not be equal to b. In such a case, we will have another two subcases where the minimum of this value will be chosen as a power w plus b power w the whole power 1 by w and the theorem will be proved and in the sub case 2 of this case 3 the minimum val value will be chosen as 1 and the theorem will be proved so we shall see all these cases one by one now i would also like to mention that a comma b is chosen from the closed interval 0 comma 1 and the value of W will be chosen from open interval 0, comma infinity. So these are the limits for A, B and W. Now, in case 1, if A equal to 0 or B equal to 0. So as the first case, we will consider if A equal to 0. Then what about the left hand side? So let us check out for that. The left hand side of the theorem will be limit w tending to infinity minimum of 1 comma now a is 0 so this term will become 0 so we will be left out with b power w raised to the power 1 by w and what will this be equal to it will be equal to limit w tending to infinity minimum of 1 comma and 1 comma b now because now this is independent of w it will be only minimum of 1 comma b we know that b is an element of closed interval 0 comma 1 and 1 is the maximum value that we have in this interval and so the minimum of these two values will be b so this is the left hand side now we will consider the right hand side what is the right hand side maximum of a comma b so the right hand side will be maximum of a comma b which will be equal to maximum of now we have chosen a to be equal to 0 so 0 comma b and we know that 0 is the least value in this closed interval and therefore, maximum of these two values will be equal to B since B is an element of closed interval 0, 1. We observe that the left hand side is B and the right hand side is also B. And therefore, the theorem holds when A is equal to 0. In a similar way, the theorem will also hold when B is equal to 0. So, I have shown that here. So, if B equal to 0 then the left hand side we obtain to be a and the right hand side is a the proof that is the explanation of the proof is the same way as we did for uh, a equal to 0 so in the same way we have got it to be a on both the sides and hence the theorem holds if we consider b to be equal to 0 and therefore on the whole for case a the theorem holds now the second case is when a is equal to b so let us check whether the theorem holds for this case so the case, second case is if a is equal to b then what about limit that is the left hand side 
So we consider the left hand side which is limit w tending to infinity minimum of 1 comma a to the power w plus now b power w can be written as a power w because we know that a is equal to b. So a power w the whole raised to the power 1 by, 1 by w and that is equal to limit w tending to infinity minimum of 1 comma 2 a power w the whole raised to the power 1 by w and so that will be equal to limit w tending to infinity minimum of 1 comma 2 to the power 1 by w and a power w the whole power 1 by w becomes a multiplied with a. Now as w tends to infinity we know that 1 by infinity is 0 and 2 power 0 will become 1 and so that will be equal to minimum of 1 comma a and we know that a is an element of closed interval 0 comma 1 and 1 is the highest membership grade so highest value and also obviously the minimum of 1 comma a will be equal to a. Now we will consider the right hand side. The right hand side is maximum of a comma b. We know that a is equal to b. So in this case it will be equal to maximum of a comma a and obviously it will be equal to a and we observe that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side and hence the theorem holds for case 2 that is when a is equal to b. So now the only proof that is left out is case 3 that is when a is not equal to b. So let us see the proof now. So now here we have case 3 that is when a is not equal to b. For this we have two subcases where subcase 1 is if suppose the minimum of these two values is this value a power w plus b power w the whole power 1 by w. Let us check whether the theorem holds or not. So uh, in this case we have to prove that so the theorem reduces to prove that limit w tending to infinity a power w plus b power w whole to the power 1 by w is equal to maximum of a comma b because we have chosen the minimum of these values to be this. So if we prove this it will be sufficient. Now in order to prove this let us assume a is lesser than b. So let us assume that a is lesser than b and let us also consider q to be equal to a to the power w plus b to the power w whole raised to the power 1 by w. Now if we take logarithm on both the sides it will be and uh, we are going to take logarithm to the base e and we know that the logarithm to the base e of q will be equal to ln q that is ln of q and this is pronounced as ln. We know that it has this representation. If we write just log q it is considered to be to the base 10 but when we consider to the base e it is all it is represented as ln q. So ln q will be equal to so taking ln on both the sides ln a power w plus b power w the whole raised to the power 1 by w. Now we know that by logarithmic rule this 1 by w will be multiplied. So by using the logarithmic rule that is log a to the power b can be written as b log a. So using this rule we can write the right hand side as 1 by w ln a to the power w plus b to the power w. We shall now take, so taking limit w tending to infinity on both the sides. So the left hand side is ln q. So taking limit w tending to infinity on the left we get limit w tending to infinity ln q is equal to on the right we will be having limit w tending to infinity logarithm of that is ln of 
a power w plus b power w the whole divided by w we can use any kind of representation that is convenient for us so now um, so from this we observe that if we substitute the limit w tending to infinity in the numerator and in the denominator we get the indeterminate form 0 by 0 or it will be infinity by infinity and so this is an indeterminate form so in differential calculus whenever we have the indeterminate form then we apply the l hospital rule and we solve the problem so uh, on applying l hospital rule we will be differentiating the numerator separately and the denominator separately and after that we will be applying the limits so using l hospital rule we will be getting this to be equal to when you differentiate the numerator separately we know that the differentiation for logarithm is 1 by x so logarithm of this when differentiated we get 1 by a to the power w plus b to the power w multiplied with now we have to use the chain rule method and we should differentiate these two separately what is the differentiation of a power w under differential calculus we know that the differentiation of a to the power x when the variable is in the power uh, so we that that will be equal to a to the power x log a so this is the differentiation now instead of a power x we have a power w so what will be the differentiation of a power w it will be a to the power w log a plus we have b to the power w and so its differentiation with respect to w will be b to the power w log b and the differentiation uh, of the denominator which is w is 1 and so divided by 1 and uh, that will be equal to so now this can be written as limit w tending to infinity let me divide the numerator and the denominator by b power w and we will be getting here as a by b whole power w log a plus and here b power w divided by b, b power w will be 1 and so we will be having log b the whole divided by a power w divided by b power w will be a by b the whole power w plus b power w divided by b power w will be 1 and so now we will apply the limits and before that we will just uh, make a rearrangement of this that is limit w tending to infinity now a by b the whole power w can be rewritten as b by a to the power negative w so that it will be convenient for us when we apply the limits so logarithm of b divided by and similarly here b by a the whole power negative w plus 1 so now now if i apply the limits it will be equal to now this term will be raised to the power negative infinity and we know that uh, it will be 1 by infinity and, and that will be 0 so this term will vanish so we will be left out with logarithm of b so logarithm of b and in the denominator b by a to the power negative w will vanish it will become 0 so 0 plus 1 and so we will be having 1 in the denominator so therefore we will be getting limit w tending to infinity logarithm of q is equal to log b so by applying the rule of the logarithm from this we will obtain limit w tending to infinity of q will be equal to e raised to the power logarithm of b and we know that it is equal to b so therefore limit w tending to infinity of q will be equal to b so i have taken and written here so now we will substitute q that we have considered so limit w tending to infinity what is q a to the power w plus b to the power w the whole raised to the power 1 by w is equal to b now on the right we have maximum of a comma uh, b which will be equal to b obviously because we have chosen a to be lesser than or equal to b and so here this b can be written as maximum of a comma b so hence we have proved that limit w tending to infinity 
a to the power w plus b to the power w the whole power 1 by w is equal to maximum of a comma b so we are done with the proof in this case where we have chosen a power w plus b power w whole raised to the power 1 by w as the minimum value next uh, as the subcase 2 we will be choosing 1 as the minimum value and we will be proving the theorem so let us see that now so in case 3 we have a subcase 2 where when a is equal to b and the minimum of these two values is cho chosen to be 1 now if this is the minimum value then we can say that this a power w plus b power w whole to the power 1 by w will be either greater than or greater than or equal to 1 because this one is the minimum of these two values so this has to be either greater or equal to 1 so we can write a power w so from this we get uh, a power w plus b power w whole raised to the power 1 by w is equal to is greater than or equal to 1 for all we have chosen w to be 0 comma infinity and a is an element of closed interval 0 comma 1 now uh, from this we can rewrite this as a power w plus b power w is greater than or equal to 1 to the power w because we have here uh, power as 1 by w so taking uh, to the power w on both the sides we will be getting this and we know that 1 power w is 1 only so therefore a power w plus b power w uh, I mean uh, b power w is greater than or equal to 1 and when can this inequality hold this inequality is satisfied only if a is equal to 1 or b is equal to 1 if a takes the maximum value 1 then 1 plus b to the power w is a value which is greater than 1 if b takes the value 1 then a power w plus 1 is a value which is greater than 1 so this inequality is satisfied only if a equal to 1 or b equal to 1 now our job is we have to check whether the right hand what happens to the right hand side when a is equal to 1 and b equal to 1 we know that the right hand side is maximum of a comma b and when a is equal to 1 we know that maximum of 1 comma b will be equal to 1 only because we know that a comma b is an element of closed interval 0 comma 1 and 1 is the maximum value in that interval and so maximum of 1 comma b will be 1 if suppose when a i mean when b is equal to 1 in that case also maximum of a comma 1 will be again equal to 1 only so the right hand side is 1 in both the cases and the left hand side is the minimum value chosen here is 1 and we see that the theorem holds when a is not equal to b and when we choose 1 as the minimum value we observe that the theorem holds in this case also hope you have understood the proof of the theorem in all the three cases hence we say that limit w tending to infinity minimum of this value is equal to maximum of a comma b so hence we have proved the theorem in all the three cases Thank you.